Hello students, welcome to EPG Partshala. I am Dr. Sumala Roy from Department of Physics and Astrophysics of University of Delhi. Today we are going to discuss about the module Kramer-Heisenberg theory of scattering from the paper radiation theory. So students, let us see what we are going to learn in this module. We will learn to calculate the cross section for the scattering of light or photon by an atomic electron and obtain the Kramer's Heisenberg expression for the scattering process. We will learn how Kramer's Heisenberg formula helps in studying different scattering process of interest. We will also learn how to get various scattering processes like Rayleigh and Thomson from Kramer-Heisenberg formula by considering elastic scattering at different ranges of photon energy. We will learn how the Kramer-Heisenberg formula or the KH formula for inelastic scattering can describe Raman scattering of different types. We will learn what are the Stokes and the anti-Stokes lines. We will learn what is coherence now occurrence and when the number of photons is not large, what happens to the coherence. Interaction of light radiation with matter shows a lot of interesting processes. The most important among them is the scattering of light radiation by the electrons of atoms of the matter. In this section, the electron of the atom is treated non-relativistically by means of Schrodinger equation. So we will use non-relativistic Schrodinger equation. For the radiation field, we shall treat it by means of quantum field theory described by the vector potential A mu. The treatment of time-dependent perturbation time dependent perturbation theory as such was developed in the previous module. Scattering of photon by electron needs the first as well as the second order contribution in the perturbation theory. So we need up to second order contribution. In this process we shall obtain Kramer's Heisenberg formula to be later used for various scattering processes. We shall obtain the cross sections of the scattering process. In section 3, we obtain the Kramer's Heisenberg formula while section 4 deals with Rayleigh scattering. Section, section 5 deals with Thomson scattering. Section 6 deals with the Raman scattering. Section 7 with coherent scattering and the last one, Section 8 is the summary of all. Scattering of photons by electrons. This is a relation of the differential cross section for the scattering of photons by the non-relativistic electrons in an atom. The interaction of photons with the non-relativistic electrons is by the perturbation term H1 equals to 1 by m sum over j e into pj vector dot a vector plus e square into a vector dot a vector. Here del a equals to 0, so p dot a equals to a dot p. The vector potential operator a in the Heisenberg picture is written as a x t integration over d 3 k upon 2 pi over 3 by 2 into 1 by square root of 2 omega k sum over lambda prime e lambda prime a k prime lambda prime e e to the power minus k prime dot x plus a k prime lambda prime 
e to the power minus k prime dot x, where the destruction and the creation operators satisfy commutation relation and e1 and e2 are polarization vectors. In the scattering process, let the atomic electron be in state A before the scattering. Let the incident photon momentum be k and the polarization vector e to the power lambda. After scattering, the final electron is left in the state B and the outgoing photon has momentum k prime and polarization e to the power lambda prime. Let us consider an atom with only one electron. The initial state of the electron and the photon is written as a k vector with a k vector and e vector to the e lambda and the final state is written as b k prime vector and a e vector lambda prime. As a is linear in a k lambda and a dagger k lambda, it will not contribute in the lowest order of the matrix element and thus the matrix element which is created by b k prime e prime lambda prime with h1 and a k e to the power e lambda e prime lambda prime is equal to b k prime e to the power e prime lambda prime with the and the matrix element of e square by 2m a dot a multiplied by the k vector a k e lambda. Substituting the expression of a from the above two equations we get b k e to the power prime lambda prime e square by 2 m a dot a a k e to the power lambda prime. Now the terms containing a a and a dagger a dagger do not contribute while a a dagger and a dagger a do give non vanishing contribution provided that a dagger and a respectively represents the creation operator for k prime e prime lambda prime and the annihilation operator for k e lambda. For example, the matrix element of e k lambda a, a k lambda a, a dagger k lambda k prime lambda prime with the vectors k prime e prime lambda prime and k e lambda equals to 1. Making using of this ideas equation for gets simplifies to the following expressions of b k prime e to the power e prime lambda prime e square by 2 m a dot a with a k e to the power lambda. This is equals to e square by 2 m into 2 by 2 pi whole cube square root of omega omega prime into omega prime into b e to the power i k minus k prime to x minus i into omega minus omega t to e to the power lambda dot e prime lambda prime and a, where omega is equal to modulus of k and omega prime is equal to modulus of k prime. In the dipole approximation, we now replace e to the power i k dot x and e to the power minus i k dot x by 1 and simplifying equation 3.6 to b k prime e to the e prime lambda prime with the matrix element e square by 2 m a dot a multiplied with the k vector a k e to the power lambda is equal to e square upon 2 m into 2 pi whole cube square root of omega into omega prime is multiplied by the e to the power lambda e vector to the e prime lambda prime into e to the power minus i omega minus omega prime into t and the vector product of b and a is equation 3.7. The golden rule formula then follows with both first and second order terms in the matrix element. We thus get omega a tends to b equals to e to the power 4 by 4m square omega prime square by omega into omega prime into 2, 2 pi to the power 6 d omega multiplied by the big term delta a b e to the power lambda dot e to the power lambda prime minus 1 by m sum over n p into the power lambda p dot e lambda prime which is b n p dot e to the power lambda n a divided by e n minus e a minus omega plus p dot e lambda b n to p dot e lambda prime n a divided by e n minus e a plus omega prime. This term is within the complete whole square. 
the differential cross section is then given by dividing omega a tends to b by flux density i by 2 pi q 1 by 2 pi q d sigma d omega equal to r 0 square omega by omega prime delta a b e to the power lambda e to e, to e lambda dot e lambda prime minus 1 by m sum over n p dot e lambda prime b n p dot e lambda n a by e n minus e a minus omega plus p dot e lambda b n p dot e lambda prime n a divided by e n minus e a plus omega prime this is under whole square where r 0 denotes the classical radius of electron and is given by r 0 is equal to e square upon 4 pi m. The equation 3.9 is called Kramer's and Heisenbach formula. Feynman diagrams. In relativistic perturbative calculations, we can represent each term in equation 3.9 by a diagram. Thus, the first term with two photon lines, one absorbed and other emitted is called Seagull diagram and it looks like a seagull bird with two wings. The second term with a photon absorbed and no photons in intermediate state is shown in B. The third diagram C corresponds to an emission of final photon with two photons present in the intermediate state. The terms proportional to charge E and containing the term P dot E k lambda in the interaction of Hamiltonian will however make a contribution in the second order as explained in the module M6. We found in that module that time integral of the first order term leads to the energy conservation delta function. The energy integral in the second order term has two overlapping time integrals. This also leads to the imposition of an energy or conservation, though not so directly as in the case of first order term in module 6. This is dealt with in detail in books of quantum mechanics. For example, see Schiff or Matthews and Venkatesan or any other recent book. The discrete switching on the perturbation at t equals to 0 creates some difficulties, but finally the integrals lead to energy conservation formulae. To obtain that we at first combine, to obtain that we had first combined the first and the second order terms by making use of commutation relations between x and p e's that is x j p j minus p j x j is equal to i delta i j. Then E lambda dot E lambda prime is E lambda E i lambda E j lambda prime delta i j equals to 1 by i into E i lambda E i E j lambda prime into x i p j minus p j x i equals to 1 by i to e to the power lambda dot x into e to the power lambda prime dot p minus e to the power lambda prime dot p e to the power lambda dot x. Further making use of the equation 3.5 of the unit M7 that is p equals to i m commutation bracket of h 0 and x we get b p vector a equals to i m e b minus e a into b bra vector x into k vector a or the matrix element of x within b and a vector equals to 1 by i m e b minus e a into the matrix element of p vector within b and a. So, substituting 4.4 in 4.2 and noting that the elastic scattering e b is equal to e a, we get w n a is equal to e n minus e a. And we have an expression for e lambda dot e lambda prime a a. So, the expression delta a b e lambda dot e lambda prime e lambda prime equal to 1 by m sum over n and the whole thing p dot e lambda prime b n p dot e lambda n a by e n minus e m minus w omega plus p dot e lambda b n p dot e lambda prime n a divided by e n minus e a plus omega prime. This finally becomes after substituting 4.5 equals to minus omega by m equals divided by n 1 by omega n a p dot into the power lambda prime b n p, to the power p dot e to the power lambda n a 
divided by omega n a minus omega minus p dot e to the power lambda a n p dot e to the power lambda prime divided by omega n a plus omega. Expression 4.7 is further simplified if we assume that the photon energy omega is much smaller than omega n a and thus 1 upon omega n a minus plus omega is nearly equal to 1 by omega n a into 1 plus minus omega by omega n a. Finally, the Kramer's Heisenberg formula 3.9 for the elastic scattering of photons becomes d sigma d omega r 0 square omega to the power 4 by m square into modular square of the whole thing sum over n 1 by omega cube n a into p dot e to the power lambda prime a n p dot e to the power lambda n a plus p dot to the power lambda a n into p dot to the power lambda prime a n a this whole square is valid for omega much much less than omega n a. The differential cross sections varies as omega to the power 4 or the inverse fourth power of the wavelength known as Rayleigh's law. For colorless gases the wavelength corresponds to a typical omega n a is in the ultraviolet region and omega much much less than omega n a. The variation of cross section as omega to the power 4 explains why the sky is blue and the sun is red. The red light with longer wavelength is scattered much less making scatter sky light blue and direct unscattered light during sunset is red. Rayleigh scattering which is essentially an elastic scattering. Kramer's and Heisenberg equation as shown in the equation 3.9 gives that differential cross section for scattering of photons by the atomic electrons. In scattering, however, several possibilities arise. One of the situation will be when a equals to b and omega equals to omega prime. This is the situation for elastic scattering or light with no energy transfer. It is called Rayleigh scattering. We shall be interested in obtaining Rayleigh's law first discovered by Lord Rayleigh which states that the scattering cross section in the wavelength limit varies inversely as the fourth power of the wavelength. Thomson scattering. In this section we study the case in which photon energy is much larger than the atomic binding, atomic binding energy omega nl. This is called Thomson scattering. The maximum contribution to differential cross section is seen from equation 3.9 comes from the first term that is d sigma d omega equal to r 0 square to omega prime by omega modular square of delta a b e to the power lambda dot e to the power lambda prime e to the power lambda whole square modular square or d sigma d omega equal to r 0 square delta a b e to the power lambda dot e to the power lambda prime modular square as omega equal to omega prime. Thomson scattering cross section becomes in the polar coordinate it becomes d sigma d omega equals to r 0 square into sin square phi for lambda prime equal to 1 and d sigma d omega equal to r 0 square into cos square theta into cos square phi for lambda prime equal to 2. If the initial photon is polarized but the final polarization is not measured then d sigma d omega equals to sin square phi plus cos square theta cos square phi into r 0 square. For initially unpolarized photon we can integrate over the angle phi and divide it by 2 pi. We can also add the contribution for phi equals to 0 and 2 pi and divide it by 2 then d sigma d omega equal to r 0 square by 2 into 1 plus cos square theta. Integrating over d omega sin theta which is equal to sin theta d theta d phi, we get total cross section for Thomson scattering to be sigma total is 8 pi r 0 square by 3 which is equal to 6.65 into 10 to the power minus 25 centimeter square. The Raman effect. We next consider the case of inelastic scattering where there is energy transfer between incident photon and the atomic electron. The final energy omega prime of the photon is different from the incident photon energy omega. Energy conservation demands that E a 
plus omega equals to E B plus omega prime where A and B are initial and the final states of the electron. Due to this relation, it is evident that if the initial state of the electron of the atom is in the ground state, then the energy of the final photon omega prime cannot be greater than incident photon energy omega. See the figure below. The scattered photon with less energy had been seen earlier by Stokes and these lines were called Stokes lines. Raman and Krishnan were the first to see the lines with higher energy which were then called anti-Stokes lines. They were often weaker in intensity and required longer exposure. The higher energy lines often have structure due to rotation and vibration effects in complex molecules. This vibration rotation spectra is often in the infrared region. The anti-Stokes lines were able to bring them to the visible optical region. The optical spectroscopy is often much easier than infrared spectroscopy. The Raman effect thus became a very useful tool for chemists studying vibration rotation spectra. Over the years, the value of Raman effect as a tool has gone up tremendously. The rotational level in this picture we see the Stokes line, the origin of the Stokes and the anti-Stokes line. You can see there are two Stokes, uh, the Stokes line. This is the transition from EC to EA. So there is an intermediate state EB where the transition takes place. In case of anti-Stokes line, this EC and EA is the the intermediate level goes down to EA and we have another three transitions there where the much higher energy these are called anti-Stokes lines. The observation of Raman effect in 1928 by Raman and Krishnan brought the first Nobel Prize in science to an Indian C. V. Raman who did this work in Calcutta. The day of discovery February 28 is now observed as a science day. Coherent scattering when phases of two wave trains of same frequency or wavelength is same, they are said to be coherent. So, inelastically scattered beam which has a different frequency like in Raman effect cannot be coherent. When coherent beams combine, their amplitudes add up and the intensity gets squared. Thus, beams from Z electrons will be give Z squared times that due to one electron if the beams are coherent. If they are not coherent, the intensity will be averaged and be z times that due to one electron. When we deal with few photon coherence has to be defined with some care. This is because of the uncertainty relation between phase and number of the photons which is delta phi delta n of the order of h bar. For a single photon phase is highly uncertain. If however, we have a number of photons in succession we can define phase, but then we lose information about which photons scattered a particular electron. So, students, let us summarize what we have learned in this module. We have calculated the cross section for scattering of a photon by an atomic electron, first calculated by Kramers and Heisenberg. The elastic cross section for energies much smaller than binding energies gives the Rayleigh scattering value. The dependence of this on inverse fourth power of wavelength explains the blueness of skylight. The elastic cross section for energy is large compared to binding energy leads to Thomson scattering cross section which agrees with the classical value. For scattering cross section, the inelastic cross section leads to Raman effect and the scattered light can have both larger and smaller frequencies. Thank you very much.